Welcome to another episode of Wine Guy TV with your host Dan Sims and my colleague, Mr. Ben Edwards. We <coughs> are here at the Millswin, the brand spanking new Millswin, the old Lynch's for those of you who remember. But we're here today to talk about some Shiraz or Syrah with a bit of a Bledisloe showdown. Yes, the Biff is on again. Bring it's it on. time for Australia to take on New Zealand. And you know, sometimes the All Blacks, they're the favourites, but you've got to be thinking with Shiraz versus Syrah. You've got to be thinking, to be thinking it, that I Australia's mean, got a bit of a chance to take this one out. Well, I should say so, because considering a Shiraz in Australia has grown well everywhere, <coughs> whereas in New Zealand, we're really talking about sort of only a certain couple of areas, yeah. and we're really focusing on Hawke's Bay. We're focusing on Hawke's Bay today. There's a bit grown up in Waiheke, but the reality is that New Zealand's a bit cooler than here. I don't know if you've noticed that. It's good for Pinot, it's good for a cool climate <laughs> varieties. It is, it's the land of the long white cloud, Dan. Thank you for that. But, um, so the reality is, is that they make a distinction between their Shiraz, which they label as Syrah, and we call ours Shiraz. Now, as a bigger, richer, riper, warmer, theirs are cooler, leaner, more savoury. Some people prefer one style, other people prefer others. So what we've done, rather than just going for the big Barossa bangers, and we love, love those, and those from the Claren as well, put it on a bit of an even keel and go for slightly cooler yeah. areas. They're not really going for a stack deck. I mean, that's what uh, oh, we're no, not trying to do in, some, you know, in those kind of scenarios. Which we, we would never do, do that. Of course, not the web bias or anything like that. Um, so, hey, let's get started. Look, we've got the Villa Maria, which is the 2006 Syrah, again from Hawke's Bay. Interesting wine. Interesting wine. A few things at play here. One of them, 2006, slightly cooler year. Mm. Um, and I think what we're starting to see in this particular wine, when you taste it, it's got a little bit of a vegetal sort of developed characteristic. It's starting to lose its primary brightness, yeah. but there's still lovely gravelly tannin. Now, is. this comes from the Gimlet Gravels in Hawke's Bay, very unique terroir, and it really does provide really lovely chalky kind of tannins, yeah. gravelly tannins we like to do. But it's still them. really spicy. You know, you still Always get that lovely sort of pepper character coming through on that wine. <laughs> it's quite a nice look. For the, today, on that particular one, I'm I'm 89 points on I wonder that. if it's a leaf day or a root day today. Well, actually, I checked early. Funny you said that. And I checked. It is a root day today, so maybe mm. that's why Maybe that's why it's bringing out those more sort of vegetal yes. kind of characteristics. My Who knows? This was this wine was made by Corey Ryan, who's now moved over to the McWilliams stable in, uh, in Australia. A very, very talented young winemaker. Speaking, Speaking of, of talented winemakers, not so young, perhaps. A man called Pat Carmody, Craig Lee, Sunbury just outside of Melbourne, I mean literally just outside of Melbourne, been around for a long time and making, I consider to be one of Australia's most iconic Shirazes. 2007 <clears throat> in Victoria was actually not so bad for Shiraz in that particular area. Yes, we had a lot of bushfires in different parts of Victoria, but it didn't affect Sunbury so much. And this wine looks really lovely and bright. It's lovely and bright, and Pat Carmody, the winemaker, I mean, he is such a quiet, reserved, lovely, lovely, lovely gentleman. Again, for me, when I start, first started out getting into wine, the Craigley always had that really intense pepper spice, almost like a white pepper character. But now, seeing this in particular vintage, we're starting <coughs> to see it almost like get this really sort of more, I suppose not as so overtly peppery. Definitely Still have that not. spice, but that really lovely, you know, from wine winky turn, you know, up to old viney kind of character coming through. There's concentration there, but it's not heavy. No. And um, both of these wines come in at 13.5% alcohol. Great. What we have here is depth of flavour. You know, and a, a really, and, and fruit that envelops the palate rather than yep. necessarily just driving through on acidity and tannin. Now, for me, I really like this wine. I've liked it before. I like it again. 94 points. Beautiful in the slot. Delicious. And yeah, relatively fantastic value for what it is. And turning the pedigree of the, uh, the vineyard, the age of the vines, the style of the wine. Absolutely super drink. Moving on. Moving on. Trinity Hill. We're going back to Hawke's Bay. We're not doing Waiheke. We're just going to concentrate on Hawke's Bay. Now, Warren Gibson is probably one of the most talented winemakers with Shiraz or Syrah in New Zealand. He has his own label called Balancha, and there's one particular wine he makes called La Colina. But he makes this particular wine for Trinity Hill, John Hancock's Trinity Hill, and it's an 08. It's 08. It is, that is super. That's a really lovely yeah, wine. That's is. just wonderfully complex. Got a, this wonderful sort of core of almost sort of blue fruit kind of character wrapped around a little bit of spice. And again, you're talking about that backbone of those sort of lovely sort of almost gravelly type tannins coming through. They're really just tightening it up yeah. and giving it a lovely freshness, sitting <clears> in that sort of medium bodied spectrum. Super food wine. Very, yeah. very smart drink. Smart drink. 
94 points. For the Rhone-style devotees out there, people that love the Rhone Valley, this is exactly the sort of wine that you would be looking for. It's got the spice and it's got that meaty kind of backbone. Yeah. Very savoury, really lovely and delicious. Very, very smart drink. I very really smart. like that. I'm 94 <coughs> points on that, Ben. Are you 94 points? I'm 94 points on Great. that, Ben. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, we're going to move along to the next one. Now, this is made by Jim Chateau. Yes. These are all very talented winemakers and they've got to have a dab hand at it because Shiraz, like Pinot Noir, has a multitude of personalities. And from the Hunter Valley, this particular vineyard, the Cocoon Vineyard from Pepper Tree Wines, was first planted in the 1860s and then added on to in the 1960s. So it's got a pretty good pedigree in terms of vine age. What do you think of the flavour? Again, uh, straight away when I get to the flavour in a minute, you pick up that wine, it is so bright and purple. It's got that incredibly attractive thing. And I've said it before, I reckon we so drink with our eyes. And immediately when I see that wine in the glass, I'm just, I'm straight for it. I sort of got an idea that there's going to be this lovely bright fruit. Again, it's in that medium body <laughs> spectrum. They're all medium body. But there's just lovely purity of fruit to it as well. And again, you know, from the Hunter, you know, there's, I mean, some of the Hunter wines, Shiraz that is coming out of there at the moment is absolutely super. Again, a super wine. This is super wine. Really lacy acidity. Lovely. Really fresh and vibrant on the finish. You know what? That's a 95. Wine. Gold medal wine. Is that a, is that a hand down? That's almost that's like a, a table a smack. Slack. That's easy. So based on what we've seen today, I've got to say that Australia, while being challenged by those upstarts from across the bitch, <laughs> I reckon Australia's got the Shiraz thing sewn up in our tasting I think today. think so, absolutely. But keep an eye out for some of the wines from Hawke's Bay. They're really starting, we're starting to see a lot more on our shores. Um, check them out. Don't ditch them. No, <laughs> don't ditch them. <laughs> I like it. You're a funny guy. So, cheers. Cheers. cheers.